Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you guys for watching. Please do leave a subscribe and please guys, please I'm begging you leave a like as well so we can keep the channel going. I do have a lot more units planned. So here we go. Question number four for part D. Anderson is an accountant hired by companies to help with financial tasks. He works from home and travels around the country visiting clients. He uses a laptop computer for personal work, for personal and work-related tasks. He has confidential information stored on his laptop, which includes personal and financial information. Anderson visits a website and sees this message. There's a problem with his website security certificate. Explain why websites use digital certificates. Some of the reasons they use them are to verify identity of website, verify that the company owns a website and that the information is genuine, valid, so that it can be trusted by the internet or, well, the internet user. Let me give a quick example of this. So, uh, if I go on to, let's do this, Office 365 website, we know that this is a Microsoft website, right? However, that padlock there, that's the digital certificate, that's the SSL certificate, that's the HTTPS they're working. When I click on that, I can go to, is it site settings? Where is it? Connection is secure. Um, certificate is valid. Here we go. And this, when I click on this, it gives me all the information I need to know who owns this website, who owns this certificate, when the certificate is supposed to expire, who it was issued by, who it was issued to. I have all the information here. Um, I can click on issue a statement as well, which I've never actually done. So let's see what comes up. And I can see more information. So this is what a digital certificate looks like on an actual website. Let's close this. Let's close this. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into that. Let me just go back to the question now. Users antivirus software will allow access to sites with certificates as the certificate verifies that the website is authentic, legitimate, and can be trusted by the internet users. This is true as well. What this is, sometimes you might go onto a website on your desktop and your antivirus will flash up saying, this website is not secure. Please don't go to this website or you have to confirm that you still want to go to the website. The, um, the antivirus checks that the website is not secure by, again, doing that same thing I just mentioned. It, cl it, it checks if the website has a certificate. It checks whether the certificate is valid. It checks who issued the certificate. It checks all of these details to see if it is secure enough for you to go onto. Let's say you're, you're going onto a website that says halifax.co.uk. Well, you go on there and there's no certificate there. There's no padlock. There's no HTTPS. There's no SSL. Your antivirus should tell you this website looks dodgy because it's not secure. And even beyond that, Google should tell you as well, I actually don't know a website I can visit that doesn't have an SSL certificate, but as soon as you go to one that does not have, oh, I think I do know one. Uh, is it Ventoy? No, this is not the one. But in, in any case, um, when you go to a website that does not have it, and it sees that it does not have a certificate, Google will flash up and tell you there's a big red exclamation mark here, I believe, which tells you this website is not secure. Here we go. So I actually found a website that does not have an SSL certificate. So just for anyone who's doing Unit 6 as well, that's website development. This is a very, very good website, a very good program that you can download, which is a completely free alternative to using Dreamweaver. So when you're actually developing your website, if your teacher or your school wants you to use Dreamweaver and you don't have it at home, which because it's going to cost you money, this is a good alternative. It's called Blue Griffin. When I click on the website, look what happens. So I've Googled the word Blue Griffin. The website comes up as the first option. I click on it and look, Chrome tells me straight away, this website's not secure. Your antivirus will most likely do exactly the same thing, but maybe in a slightly different way. You might pop up down here to the right-hand side where the clock is. And I actually have to click continue to site. And when I continue to site, um, okay, it wasn't a red exclamation mark. It was a gray one. But in either case, as you can see here, it says not secure and it has the warning sign next to it. So I know as a user going onto this website, this will flash up and say it's not secure. So your antivirus will do something similar. So hopefully that made sense. The last thing it has here provides encryption for communication using encrypted attachment, uh, ensuring that initial data transmitted is protected, allowing for an encrypted response. Now, what this means, again, let's go back to the Halifax version, right? If let's just say the website I just showed you, Blue Griffin, was... Oh, Blue Griffin was the Halifax website. When I went onto it, if it did not have this thing here, look at all of this, all, everything in red saying it's not secure. 
you go onto the Halifax website, you're trying to send and receive information to your bank account. The app does more or less the same thing as well. So let's think of this Halifax as a service, right? You're trying to log in using your login details, your password, your account number, your memorable information. Because the connection is not secure, because it is not encrypted, when you send that information across the internet, it is not jumbled. So if a third party gets access to it, all they have to do is open it like a normal Word document. So they'll just see the information like this. Whereas if it were encrypted, let's just say, do not accept is the thing that you're sending across the internet as your password, right? If it is not encrypted, this is exactly what the person sees. They see your entire details, your entire password, your entire login details, everything. If it is encrypted, they might see something like this as a basic example, right? Now, this is me doing overkill, right? But the whole point is, how would you go from how would you as a normal user go from this to knowing that these two mean exactly the same thing virtually impossible right so that's a whole purpose of having something encrypted and if the traffic is encrypted initially then the traffic will keep being encrypted so i if i send the encrypted information to the website the website might send something back like accept right but rather than send it oh spelled it wrong but rather than sending accept back to me, what it might send back to me is this. Again, there's no real way for me to decipher that this meant accept, even if I got access to it. So those are some of the reasons why you do want to have digital certificates on your website. They are massively important, especially when the user has to send information back and forth. Even sending something like a simple message to someone on a website. So, you know, you have those websites where it says like it, it, it has a contact us page and you, you can fill in a form and send an email and you get a response. Even that, what if you're, I don't know, I'm looking for some builders now, right? And I put my details in, I put my phone number, my address, my, my email address, my name, and I send that. If that's not encrypted, anyone can get those details and they might not be able to do much with it. But remember, they might have my, my name, my phone number, my email, and my address, so they can do some stuff with it, okay? So we need to have things encrypted, and one of the ways we do that on a website is to have uh, the SSL certificate, to have the HTTPS um, uh, URL there, and to obviously have our digital certificates active. Because again, here we can see your connection to this site is not secure. It tells us straight away. This is not even my antivirus. This is just Google Chrome.